Davey Allison was a Cup Series driver who raced in the late 80s and early 90s. He was born in Hollywood, Florida, but would soon move to Hueytown, Alabama as a child. Growing up, he would watch his legendary father, Bobby Allison, along with his uncle Donnie, racing in the Cup Series. The two would form the infamous Alabama Gang, along with their good friends Red Farmer and Neil Bonnet. Davey Allison's racing career would soon begin after he graduated high school. Him and his group of friends, affectionately known as the Peach Fuzz Gang, would begin building their own cars and racing them at Birmingham International Speedway in 1979. Davey won in just his sixth start, and by 1983 became a regular series winner at the Speedway. That same year, he began racing in the NASCAR Busch Series for his father. From 83 to 84, he would make 11 starts, scoring 6 top 10s. Although he found minimal success there, the ARCA Series was where he would truly shine. In his only full-time season, Allison scored 2 wins, 6 top 5s, 8 top 10s, with an average finish of 11.3, and finished 3rd in the standings. That same season, he would catch another big break as he would make his Cup Series debut at Talladega for Haas Ellington, scoring a top 10. In 1986, he would make four starts for the Sadler brothers in the 95 car, but his best performance came when he filled in for the injured Neil Bonnet at Talladega. Allison would start 12th and score his second career top 10 that day, finishing 7th. The following season, he would score his first big break driving in the Cup Series for Harry Rainier. During speed weeks, they were able to negotiate a deal with Texaco Haviland to sponsor Davey Allison's rookie campaign. Davey impressed right from the get-go, as he would qualify on the front row for the 1987 Daytona 500. The team stumbled out of the gate at first, but was able to catch success early on. In just his sixth career Cup Series start, Allison was able to score his first career win at his home track in Talladega. This was a bit sweet victory because this was the same race where on lap 22, Bobby Allison would crash into the catch fence, injuring several spectators. Davey was on a roll, and this would turn out to be one of the best rookie seasons in Cup Series history. In 22 of 29 starts, Allison scored 2 wins, 9 top 5s, 10 top 10s, with an average finish of 14.2, and although he finished 21st in the standings, he would still go on to win Rookie of the Year. The following season is known mostly for one historic event. In the 1988 Daytona 500, Bobby Allison would beat his son Davey, scoring a 1-2 finish for the Allison family. It was one of the greatest moments in NASCAR history, and up to this point, this was Davey's greatest moment in racing. The good times, unfortunately, wouldn't last very long. On June 19th of that season, Bobby Allison would suffer a near-fatal crash at Pocono, effectively ending his Cup Series career. This left Davey Allison as the only one to carry on the family legacy. At this point, the members of the Alabama gang were either getting injured or retiring. Davey was looked at as someone who could carry the group into the future, and in 1988, it was looking very promising. In a very up and down season, Allison scored 2 wins, 12 top 5s, 16 top 10s, with an average finish of 15.1, and would score his first ever top 10 points finish, finishing 8th. 1989 would see a bunch of changes within the organization. Robert Yates would buy the team from Rainier and form Robert Yates Racing. The initial years of the team were filled with inconsistency. From 1989 to 1990, they won four races but failed to finish top 10 in the standings. 1991 was looking like a bad season waiting to happen. After the first four races, Allison was sitting a dismal 21st in points. Soon after, one of the greatest crew chief hires would take place in the hiring of Larry McReynolds. The championship potential was finally on full display. With the right crew chief pairing and the team finally getting their stuff together, Together, Allison was able to put up his best season up to this point. He was able to put up 5 wins along with 12 top 5s, 16 top 10s, and an average finish of 10.9. With his 3rd place points finish, he was entering the 1992 season as a championship favorite for the first time in his career. Davey started off the season in the best way possible, scoring a win in the 1992 Daytona 500. Through the first 5 races of 92, Davey Allison scored 5 top 5s. He was viewed as unstoppable. Unfortunately, in the sixth race of the season at Bristol, a hard crash would leave him with a bruised shoulder and broken ribs. The following race, they would have Jimmy Hensley on standby, but by lap 70, it became apparent that Davey wasn't getting out of the car. Despite his injuries, Davey Allison was able to roll on to his second victory of the season and maintaining his points lead. This began a trend of races where he would win one week but wreck the next. 
They somehow did both on the same night. In the All-Star race, Allison would go on to win, but would also suffer a severe concussion, bruised lung, and a battered bruised body in the process. This wasn't the end of Allison's bad luck. Later on that summer at Pocono in the 16th race of the season, he would make contact with Daryl Waltrip and his car would get airborne and flip violently. This left him with another severe concussion along with a broken arm, wrist, and collarbone. His father's career had ended here four years earlier, and after this wreck, many fans wondered if Davey's career had ended here as well. Allison would return to the next race at Talladega, but would need a relief driver in Bobby Hillen Jr., who would go on to finish third. Unfortunately, tragedy would strike later that summer, as his younger brother Clifford Allison would pass away in a Bush Series practice crash at Michigan. After all of that, Allison was still able to pull himself together and score a top five that same weekend. The rest of the season went according to plan, and he was able to stay healthy and consistent all the way up through the season finale. He was able to notch one last victory at Phoenix that would propel him all the way to the points lead heading into Atlanta. And just like that, Allison's championship run was over. In one of the craziest seasons in all of NASCAR history, his stats are this. 5 wins, 15 top 5s, 17 top 10s, with an average finish of 11.5, and would once again finish 3rd in the standings. Through the first 16 races, Davey Allison was having a solid 1993 campaign. He had scored 1 win at Richmond and had 8 top 10s and was sitting 5th in the standings. This wasn't looking like a championship season, but it was definitely something he could build off of. Unfortunately, his following seasons would never come to fruition, because on July 12, 1993, tragedy would strike. Davey Allison was in very critical condition late Monday night after the helicopter he was piloting crashed at Talladega Motor Speedway. The helicopter Allison has owned for just a few weeks crashed on the infield of the Super Speedway. Mr. Allison, uh, 32 of uh, Hueytown, Alabama, injured in a private uh, helicopter crash yesterday at Talladega Super Speedway, uh, died this morning at Caraway Methodist Medical Center. Davey Allison had boarded his newly acquired helicopter to fly to Talladega Super Speedway to watch family friend Neil Bonnet and his son David test a car for David's Bush Series debut. He was attempting to land the helicopter inside a fenced-in area, but the helicopter nosed up all of a sudden and then crashed. The National Transportation Safety Board blamed the crash on Allison's inexperience in helicopters, coupled with a decision to attempt a landing. Just two weeks after the tragedy, a pre-race tribute had taken place at his home track of Talladega. Talladega. Davey Allison's legacy can be found in a lot of places today. In 1993, he actually won the IROC Series Championship posthumously. Then in 1998, he was inducted into the International Motorsports Hall of Fame. A road was named after him and Neil Bonnet, as it was called the Allison Bonnet Memorial Drive. And finally, in 2019, Davey Allison was officially inducted into the Hall of Fame by his family. Davey Allison accomplished a lot during his short time here, and is forever remembered as a legend. Davey Allison was 32. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.